This is the advice that I give to my son that I wish I would give to myself. Plus, an absolutely life-changing mom hack that you don't want to miss. Hey there, I'm Jillian Kendrick, and welcome to the Momentum Marketing Podcast. I'm a mama, a wife, an entrepreneur, and a three-time best-selling co-author. In each episode, you'll get real-world practical advice and strategies, and maybe a parenting tip or two along the way. If you're ready to create a business that supports your family and your lifestyle, then you're in the right place. Hey, it's Jillian. I'm so glad to have you. I have been thinking so much about this episode of the Momentum Marketing Podcast. I'm glad that you're with me. And this episode has actually been a long time coming. It's been something that I've been thinking about for a while. And every time it pops up in my parenting life or in my personal life, there's that little reminder of, oh yeah, I need to talk about that. We need to discuss that. Okay. All right, thanks for the hint, universe. I get it now, God. And I'm so excited to be here with you today. Before we dive in, as always, if you haven't checked out my masterclass on how I get over 600 leads every single month consistently, head to jilliankendrick.com forward slash masterclass, and you can grab immediate access to the free training right there. This training is so good. I really made it just for you. I have lots of people signing up. I'm in the process of retooling and re-recording it to make it even better, but I promise even if you watched it today, it is just so good. So you have to check it out. The new version will be up in about a week or so. So if you have watched it before, give me a week and I encourage you to check it out again because it is so, 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 so good. Back to the topic at hand, we were talking about all of the advice that I consistently give my son that I now am going to give myself. My son just turned four. He actually, as of this recording, he uh, just turned four a few days ago. So we're super excited. We now have a four-year-old in the house, which comes with its own amazing challenges. Um, We've been doing a lot of extra potty training. He's been doing a really good job. We're still working on a few things and he will still sit on the potty and be like, I can't do it. No, I don't like this. I don't want to. I can't do it. I can't do it. And of course, not only being his mom, but being an entrepreneur, being a go-getter, being the kind of person that has had to pave my own way through most of my life anyway, He and I, as of late, have had a lot of conversations about what he can do, his ability, what fear means. And I try really hard not to talk to him like he's a four-year-old. I try not to dumb things down. Sometimes I will say stuff but use maybe simpler words or I'll use a word or two. But I do try to just talk to him intelligently, and even if it flies a bit over his head, even if he doesn't understand all of it, I still talk to him as if he can fully understand me, because one day he will. And so when he has these moments where he's like, no, I'm afraid, I don't like it, I'm scared, I can't do it, we talk a lot about perseverance. We talk a lot about overcoming fear. We talk a lot about... The fact that, at least for us, in our family, and our belief, is that God doesn't put fear into our hearts. That's an outward, worldly sort of thing. And so we talk a lot about that. We talk about doing things in the face of fear, in spite of the way that you feel about it. We even talk at length about not liking something and doing it anyway, that not liking it is not an excuse to not do it. And yes, it would be very easy, and sometimes it is easy for me as the mom of a four-year-old to say, okay, you know what, buddy, It's, it's been a long day. I know this has been hard for you. Like, it's okay. And sometimes I do. Like, I let him kind of get off easy. <laughs> Or sometimes I say, okay, I've driven this home enough. I've pushed hard enough. Like we could take a break. It's okay. But my belief 
is that if I'm going to be a good mom and if I'm going to prepare him for not only how to live and exist in our home, but how to live and exist within the world, there are opportunities for me to take those lessons and teach him things that, yes, are way beyond what a four-year-old could could like really, truly, viscerally comprehend. But I believe in doing it and giving him that gift so that when it comes time that he does understand, when it comes time that things get a whole lot harder than sitting on the potty, it won't be the first time that he hears me say it. And sure, I don't remember a whole lot from when I was four years old either, but I do remember how my parents made me feel. So I might not remember their words, but I remember that feeling that stuck with me. And then as we get older, we attach those feelings to words. And then as we get older, they embed into who we are as humans. And the lessons that we learn when we're tiny are what prepares us for moving forward. So how does this all tie into entrepreneurship? Great question. I think it's cyclical. I think that the fear I feel, the nervousness, the anxiousness, the excitement, the dread, or even the procrastination (laughs) that I feel or that I impose on myself in moments when I'm afraid or in moments that I'm not quite sure where to go or what decision to make. In those moments, I revert back to the feeling that I had or the lesson that I learned or the coping mechanism that I developed as a kid to deal with this. And now I'm not smart or bright enough to tell you exactly what that is. I'm still figuring that out on my own, but I can tell you that every time I revert, every time I go back to, oh man, I don't know if I can do this. I'm really afraid. And I have those moments. They're not often, but I definitely have them. We all do. Anyone who's successful goes through that on a regular basis. When you get to that moment of chaos where you're lacking clarity and indecision sets in, there is a very primal thing that happens in our brain and in our body where we revert back to either the coping mechanism or the mental process that we learned as children on how to deal with this thing, on how to move forward. And so if you did not learn a great coping mechanism, or a great way to handle stress, a great way to figure out your indecision, or a healthy way to accept and then overcome fear, it will consume you. And you'll be left in the chaos, left in the indecision, left wondering why you can't accomplish your dreams. So yes, my son is only four years old. Yes, I... I'm speaking to him in ways that he doesn't quite understand yet, but what I believe I'm teaching him to the best of my ability as an imperfect, broken, yet optimistic human being is that I want to teach him better coping mechanisms than I had, better ways to deal with the things that he doesn't want to do, the things that he's afraid of, the things that... He doesn't know how to do and to teach him a way to cope and process and deal with those things so that when he gets to the point and he gets to the age that he understands, it's not the first time I've told him that. And so that when he gets beyond this house, whether it's school, college, professional life, I don't care if he becomes an entrepreneur or not. What I care about is that whatever it is that he wants to pursue in his life, he has the tools to not let his fear, anxiety, or overwhelm cripple him from doing that thing. So we talk through a lot of, well, bud, I'm sorry that you don't like it, but sometimes in life we have to do things that we don't like. Or 
the best way to deal with something that you don't like doing or that you don't want to do is to just do it and get it over with. Like every time he fights me on trying to take medicine, just do it. Just do it and get it over with because the more we fight and push back and fuss, the longer we are postponing the thing that we're dreading. And so if you just do it and get it over with, wash your hands of it, it's done. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. I'll be honest. But it's no different. Parenting and entrepreneurship, they're really, really, truly no different. Other times he and I talk about, he says, well, I can't do it. And I say, yeah, you're right. If you believe that you can't, you're absolutely right. You can't. But you can try. We can give it a chance, and then we celebrate that attempt, even if the outcome isn't the success that we were looking for in the first place, we're still celebrating his attempts. We're not saying, oh, well, you tried, and you didn't quite make it on the potty, and that's okay. No, we're still celebrating every single attempt. Because the one thing I know to be absolutely true about entrepreneurship is that it is a game of iteration. You build a funnel, you have to tweak the funnel. You hire a team, you iterate on those positions or those people. You go down one path, well, that didn't work. Okay, now we need to pivot. And it's the same thing for parenting. Parenting is the perseverance in iteration. It is Well, I tried this with my child. Okay, that didn't work. We're going to change our habits. We're going to try something different. Oh, okay, that worked. And what worked today might not work tomorrow or next week. So then we're going to try something different. It is a marathon of inches and centimeters sometimes. But they're both the same. They're both exactly, exactly the same. If you're listening to this and you still have a kiddo that is either in diapers or you're still using a diaper genie, here's my absolutely life-changing mom hack for you. I think I might have told this on a previous episode, but um, it keeps popping up in my life. So if you have a diaper genie, you know that those things are just, they're kind of a necessary evil and all of them smell. No matter which one you get, if you get like the twisty one, or you get the regular bag or this or that, like they all smell. And the one product, the only one product that I have found that actually combats that smell and helps a lot is the, and this is not an affiliate link, although it should be, maybe I should put that in. (laughs) Arm and Hammer scent booster beads. You know, those uh, scent boosters that you can throw into your laundry They're probably terrible for your laundry machine. I have no idea, but I don't use them in our laundry. What I do is every time we change out a new bag in the diaper genie or every time we throw a new diaper into the diaper genie, we toss a few of those beads in as well. Just like a little, maybe a quarter cup or so, maybe less, just depending on how bad it is. And I've tried other ones. I've tried some of the other brands, the Gain and a few others, but I have found that the Arm & Hammer with the baking soda absolutely 100% works the best. I prefer the crisp, clean scent, but you can use whatever you want. Just make sure that it has baking soda in it. And as always, I would love to hear from you if you have any insight whatsoever, if you think that entrepreneurship and parenthood are exactly the same like I do, I would love to hear from you. Email me hello at jillianKendrick.com and let's start a conversation. I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of the Momentum Marketing Podcast. If listening to this has brought you value, improved your life, or given you insight on how to build your own momentum, then please share it with a friend. And if you're ready to grow your business on autopilot, then I want to help you get there easier and faster with a free copy of my Entrepreneur Survival Kit. Just leave a review of this podcast wherever you're listening right now. Hopefully it's a five star and you love it. Then screenshot the review and email the screenshot to hello at jilliankendrick.com. 
Once we confirm the review, we'll send you a copy of the survival kit totally free. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next episode. All content is written and recorded by Jillian Kendrick, copyright 2024, all rights reserved.